Welcome back to our Church Flip. I'm Jeff Thorman from Home Renovision DIY, and today we're gonna to do one of the most asked about videos of all time. How can I move my laundry from one part of the house to the next? What's the process for all of the mechanical hookups and electrical requirements, the plumbing requirements? We're gonna tackle all that today. We're gonna to show you step by step, running your new dryer, your new washer, and getting all of the permits approved Stay with us. And this is a process you wanna do whenever you're doing any renovation. Do your um, heating and air conditioning systems, your duct work, and you work your way down from the things that are the largest and least flexible to the most flexible. So we go from mechanical to plumbing, waste drain, vent systems, water supply, and then our electrical. And you try to think, and from the beginning, and always leave yourself room to run the next system. So in this case, our dryer is gonna be here. My washer will be here, but the blocking in this wall prevents me from installing my washer box directly behind the unit. That's okay, because the washers come with really long 30 inch flexible extendable hoses. So we're gonna put our washer box over here, which is convenient for our water supply. And in our situation, convenient for drain and venting too, because we're gonna be using a Santa Flow system. So it's gonna be a little pump down here on the ground that all the wastewater from our shower and our laundry goes to, and then it's gonna pump it up and out, okay? So let's get this installed. Then we'll connect the Santa Flow piping into the ceiling to our existing venting, okay? That'll be working perfectly. Now, if you've never worked with a washer box before, they're quite simple. The cap pops off. This is now your rough in box. And so they have these little tabs on the side and you slide these in and these are for mounting the box. This is the finished trim. So after you're done all your drywall work, you then snap this on over top to get a finished look. Okay, so put this somewhere safe in the meantime. Now there's all kinds of knockouts in here. There's a knockout right here for an inch and a half pipe. We'll use that for our, our drain for our washer. We're gonna stick this bad boy somewhere up here against this wood so that I keep it from rattling around, give it a little bit of strength. And I'm just gonna use some one inch number eight screws to mount the box with the flange. And that is as easy as it gets. Now that, no, that might seem a little bit flimsy, but keep in mind, once we install our drywall and cut out the hole and connect all of our plumbing, it's not going anywhere. If you are concerned about it, once you get your ABS pipe in here, feel free to take some all round strapping and just attach it to each side and hold it to the back wall, nice and tight. And you can get a good compression that way. That way when you're working your fittings, you can open and close your plumbing without it slopping around, right? Piece of cake. So the reason I set it up against the framing is so that I can knock out the drain. There we go. And that just finds the weak spot and peels open. Now that one and a half inch fits up there really conveniently. Now, we're gonna attempt to put our one and a half inch inside this wall cavity, which will require the water lines to be pushed and flexed around it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna cut through the water lines. This is the hot, this is the cold. I know this because the right side on the back of a fixture is always the hot. Let's make life easy for now. We'll cut here and we'll cut here. Okay, now it's easy to flex. I'm gonna take the opportunity to put my fittings on for the water supply here. We're interrupting to steal some water. One of the benefits of working with PEX is usually a little flexibility in the lines, okay? So we'll get all this done for a hot and our cold. And we'll get this crimped. And then you see all the movement? That gives us the flexibility we need. So we're gonna do all the crimping first. We're not gonna be able to do that once these lines are under pressure from the pipe. So it's best to get this done in advance. Again, of course, Always use the solid copper rings. The pinch clamps fail. Let's measure. What we want to do is we want to have a pipe come from inside this, come down, and then have a P-trap, okay? So, here is a P-trap. So now we're gonna measure. And by having that P-trap sitting on the ground and coming straight out of the wall, that's perfect. So we're gonna dry fit it. Just eyeball with your thumb, line up your cutting tool, Press and twist. We're officially cut and measured. Here we go. But how do we keep it in the wall? Code is gonna require that all of this is glued in place, right? What we're gonna do is get the glue work done first, then we're gonna tie it in because we can just set this in position. Ah, oh, I should be careful of my words, right? Carefully your words, Jeffrey. This is not glue, this is a solvent. 
and as such you want to put it on both sides the fitting and the pipe line this one up at 90 degrees so it's coming out of the wall nice you only got a couple of seconds to get that done okay and then again fitting in the pipe and because it's a solvent it's effectively melting the and then after a few seconds it hardens up again okay done that's that's modern day plumbing you don't need a plumber to do this you just need the right tools and the right information okay plumbers will be happy to never have to do silly things like run pex water lines again for the rest of their life there's better ways that they can make money all right this is called all round comes in a little box you find it in the plumbing aisle that comes in copper stainless steel regular galvanized okay it's just a few bucks, but it gives you all the flexibility for tying all your mechanical together so nothing's moving around. Now we can take our all round. We can get this in position. And what we're doing here is not attaching the pipe to the strap. I'm simply creating an environment where this pipe can't be protruding past the framing. We're gonna do that again up here too because there's a lot of tension going on with this plumbing. If there isn't a lot of tension, you can just throw the strap across, okay? Because we got a little bit of tension, we're gonna install the strap in interior of the framing. All right? And we're gonna use this as a way of forcing the pipe back in position. See how everything's moved? There we go. This isn't an under enough stress down here. So we'll do the same thing down here. That's just not enough pressure. Good. So now my pipe's in position. Everything's being held back. This is already crimped. All I gotta do is connect my water lines, cold to cold, and then hot to hot. Just a quick tip. When you get your PEX off a coil, it looks like this, okay? You can just straighten it out by bringing it a few feet at a time and just work it the other way until it straightens out a little bit. All right, that's a little easier to work with. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure by sticking the pecs in position, twisting it over, and then marking it with the cutters and cutting it. That's simple. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick one ring on each end and then put the pipe in place. Okay, you want to push one way and then push back the other way. Create like an S curve, pop it in place. Okay, slide the rings down into position within an eighth of an inch of the joint. Close completely and know you're good. Do the same with the cold water line. There we are, boom. It is good practice to run your water lines a few inches apart so they're not making contact. Hot and cold running together make condensation. Condensation will drip inside a wall. That can develop a problem. So in this situation, treat it like you would as if you had a, an electrical wire running over a heat run because in those situations you have hot with hot and you can cause fire. This situation you'll do with condensation just by insulating it. Uh, using that uh, half inch pipe wrap that you can find, that black foam stuff with the, yeah, that works too. Well, here we go. Washer box is installed. All right, so let's go through it. We got our dryer done. We got our washer box. We got our drain now. Now, uh, this is for roughing. So my plan for a passing inspection is to demonstrate that I have the drain and the P-trap. The venting isn't really all that necessary because I'm putting it right into my Santa cube right away. If I fail because of venting, I would be amazed because this pipe hooks here and air can actually follow, okay? And the Santa cube box has its own dedicated vent. So we're gonna take this one and a half inch orange plastic cap. It's called a test cap. We're simply going to dry fit it on the pipe. Okay, demonstrating the fact that this is not glued in, but this is temporary. Now, we have to move on to our electrical because our plumbing is done for rough in now. I know it's that simple. Don't overcomplicate your things. As long as you get all of the rough ins, which means the mechanical functions enter the room and leave the room 
Whether they're connected or not is not part of Ruffin. It's just having the ability to make the connections at a later date where those connections can then be inspected, okay? So when the inspector comes, he's gonna be like, okay, you got water supply, you soldered it, that's good, done, drain. When I come back, I'm gonna see how the Santa Cube is installed. That'll determine whether I pass this or not. And that's what's going on in his brain. So everything's in the room. All we gotta do now is connect pipe in the ceiling where the vent will go and tie in over there. So the next part of this process is gonna be different for everybody. What we have to do now, because I'm using a Santa Flow, is I have to have a vent tie in and I have to have an extraction, like a, like a, a drain pipe. The units themselves have the ability, depending on the unit, to lift up 15 or 25 or 50 feet and out 150 feet or more. So it's not an issue to tie in in a, in a basement like this. That's why I love the flexibility. That's why we use them. Every time I have to open concrete or tie into something that's underneath the subfloor like what we have here, it's a lot more time and expense and frustration. So just spending the money on a unit and moving forward and knowing you're gonna get a good result, it, it saves a lot of energy. So uh, we're gonna tie into the old bathroom fan, which was a wet vent. It's confirmed it's tie into the system. And then we're gonna tie into the existing vent that's over there with a T mold, with a T fitting for the vent for the Santa Cube. The process will be different for everybody depending on your, on your scenario, like I said. But just make sure that every time you have a drain, you have a vent, that's really the key. All right, or your plumbing won't work. Again, the question I keep asking myself, why did they run the doorbell wire right at the joint of a ceiling? One of the most dangerous places to run any wire. So whenever you're tying into your venting, um, the key is really to make your measurement and your mark to the inside of these coupling joints so that this goes over the existing pipe that's left, okay? So I'm just gonna reach up here, give myself a little bit of room to work with, mark on the pipe, the top and the bottom, knowing this, that once I've disengaged this section, of pipe, this top part will have some flexibility, okay? And we'll be able to set this on and, and get the adhesive in without any issue, all right? I keep calling the solvent adhesive, I don't know why. Bad slang habits. All right, here goes everything, kids, here we are. Try to cut this somewhat straight. That's great, and because we're only dealing with air here, I don't have to worry too much about the burr action, okay? So. Okay, let me get rid of the old pipe. That was interesting. There was water in there. There it is, check that out. This vent pipe was holding water. That means it's coming off that elbow and rising up. So every time it rains, the water's collecting in the bottom of that pipe. Well then, let's take the opportunity to fix that. Yeah. We're gonna cut off a little bit more of this pipe so that when we connect it, we get a bit more of a downward angle and we don't have that problem. If your pipe is collecting too much water, the air can't flow. So then what's the good as the, va the vent, right? All right, let's take another inch and change off of this. Just enough to get some solvent on. Well, that's much better. Okay, now when I stick this in, I also wanna have it sloping down. In the perfect world, my pipe, even those events, will also have a slope up. Because if you ever do get some confused individual in the future tying into your vent to do a drain line, at least it'll still function. Maybe not perfectly, but it'll at least function. So, lots of solvent on here. It'll give us some extra drying time. We're gonna be speedy instead of perfect here. We're not gonna worry about how pretty we are. We're just gonna get her done. And it's venting, so you don't have to worry about being too watertight. It's more about getting it in, getting it on, and getting out. All right, and getting that angle. <clears throat> Downward slope. And there the water came out. That's a good sign. Okay, beautiful. Now, I also have this two inch pipe here that we've identified is running into the drain. This is a wet vent drain system going on right here. What we're gonna do, oh my, well, that's not gonna work too well. I need a coupling for that bad boy. I'm gonna show you guys how to convert two inch to one and a half inch plumbing. It's this simple. Let me show you. This is called a reducer coupling and it goes over the one and a half inch pipe and then a two inch coupling fits over top of that and then your two inch pipe goes inside of that. Really all you gotta do is have the right fittings, lots of solvent and make sure that you put the solvent on the pipe 
and the fitting. Okay, this is what makes this whole system work. And then we put solvent on this fitting and then inside the coupling. All right, and then we put solvent inside the coupling and then over the pipe. Tell me, watch yourselves. Boom. We get the pipe in the ceiling and then put the coupling over the pipe and twist. Perfect every time. Now I'm just gonna measure across the other side of the wall, cut and fit the pipe and stick it over here on that T-fitting. And then we'll put a couple of elbows coming through the ceiling and that'll officially be roughed in. 56 and a half. We'll go 57 for good measure. There we go, 57 over here. Oh, this is the good stuff. The real good ABS is a lot harder to cut than the stuff you get from Home Depot. It's not actual ABS. They just allow us to use it, and I don't know why. All right, into the cavity. Back over here. Okay. Solvent again. By the time you've done this three or four times, you're going to be like, yep, that is way too easy. Okay. Set the glue. Worry about the cap on that glue later. It's all about getting this in. All right. And I'm going to take my cut-off piece of pipe. Use it as a spacer to hold it up. Done. Room to work. So, this is one of these moments where I just get brutally honest with my audience. Um, I screwed up. This pipe is a little long and the other pipe is way too short. I don't know what I did wrong with my measuring, but if you follow my channel at all, you know half the times I'm giving you measurements on <laughs> in the video. I've made a mistake. Um, I can't, I, I thought that was simple. Measured the space, I added thickness for the plate and the drywall, and somehow I still ended up a good two inches short. So there's a couple of different ways you can fix it. This is the best part. Now we get to watch how we fix it. When you go too long, you cut the pipe back. That's the easy fix, right? So here we go. Yep, done. When you go too short, then you gotta be creative. Here's one option that might work. I haven't checked to see if the, I don't, I think it's too short, but you can use, instead of a short 90, you can use a long sweeping 90. And it tends to reach out. Yeah, it's gonna be just a little bit too short. Okay, so no big deal. I could use it on this one. That'll work. What I'm gonna use is a uh, coupling, okay? And couplings are simple. They're just wider than the pipe and they're just designed for pipe to go on each side and then put a pipe extension. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install this onto the pipe that's sitting there and then I'm gonna to measure to use this fitting to have this coming out over here. So step one is to get the coupling installed because you don't wanna to do too many of these joints at the same time. You start measuring and everything else, things dry too fast. We're just gonna get up here, do the pipe as well. Reach in and slide that on. There we go. Okay. And I want it to come. And what I'm doing is I'm dry measuring, okay? I'm just, I'm, I'm sticking it up against the fitting, all right? To get an idea of where this is. And then it'll go back three quarters of an inch when I'm done. Okay, so I'm gonna go to here. Let's cut this pipe. Your plumbing has to be as perfect as your solution for finishing, okay? If you're doing it yourself, and I've got a hole in the ceiling, like I said, I was gonna put a box around this. Well, I'm gonna end up putting a box around this too. So I'll probably have a box around the whole darn thing, make one box. That gives me a lot of flexibility. I didn't wanna have the trouble of cutting through the plate or drilling holes or lining things up to the millimeter. Bring it down, cutting through the fire. Oh, I've got plumbing down there too. Just put it on the surface, make your life simple. And then we can all move on. Here we go. A little on the solvent on the pipe, a solvent in the fitting, okay reach and stick it in and twist. There we go. That's a good spot. And then I'll use a regular angle and I'll get that on the pipe as well. There we go. Get this one in here. And you want to make sure that you do install these 90 degrees so the next pipe will fit nice, right? Let's get this one glued on as well. This one is going to be for the ejection. So we got to get rid of the burrs. We don't want to have anything making contact there. Oh, 
I know some guys use a special tool to deburr. I just like to use my thumb. Okay, set it nice. Set it nice. I think everything here is lined up pretty darn good. Okay, I'm just gonna put a piece of pipe with a cap on it. Orange caps tell the inspector that it's rough in. Whew. Okay, beautiful. Now I've got room to get inspected and get my drywall up in behind everything, close this wall off. All we gotta do now is bring electrical services to all of our machines. So we need electrical for the Santa Flow pump, electrical for the dryer, and electrical for the washer. We're almost done. So you wanna have a little bit of fun, you're not gonna believe this. I um, got in touch with the guys from Santa Flow. They're gonna bring the pump out for me. And I had a concern, right, about pumping it up through into the existing, what we thought was a wet vent. And I wanted to know if he had a way to test that theory. And he didn't. And since we didn't know where it was going, I said, well, can we put it in over here? And I was concerned because being under pressure, maybe it would end up in the sink. And he told me this, we're gonna bring this wire over to this box and hook up the pump. So all of the water will come to it and we're gonna bring it up. And then once it takes a 90 degree, it goes from under pressure to gravity. And now that it's a gravity line, it acts like any other waistline. So all I have to do is add a 90 here and then a TY on top of it. Add another 45 to get the nice long turn, okay? And then I can bring it right across and tie in to where my sink is. Problem solved. But what I gotta do here also is upgrade this. If I touch this pipe, I can't leave it. So now I'm gonna extend this pipe up to the top, which means I'd have to move the water line, stick on a metal plate to protect it, and I'd have to lose <laughs> my medicine cabinet because I don't have enough room for the pipe. And what I would do is I'd take this fitting with the male thread, or so the female thread, and this little cheater vent, and this becomes my fresh air for this sink. Okay, and it has to be installed higher than the flood plane of the sink. And so what I like to do in this situation is put in a fresh air return grill, like a cold air return vent in the ceiling. And then this is perfectly legal. Problem is, is I have to take this wood off and the medicine cabinet has to go and all this work has to be done. So what I'm gonna do instead is this. I'm gonna add furring on the wall, two by two, all my studs. I'm gonna build out the wall, give myself a little more room to do the rest of this plumbing. He also told me that they updated the code. Now I know right now it's really hard to get two inch ABS, okay? Every store in town is out. There's like a mad rush for building materials. So if you're like me and you need to find something and Home Depot doesn't have it, what you do is you go to the country stores. Contractors don't have the time to drive all the way out into the country to go find a piece of ABS. So they still have plenty of stock. So don't be afraid to check it out. I have to update this to a two inch, okay? Not a big deal. The only difference is, is because I ABS and this is a PVC, I have to use this transition cement, okay? Because it'll bond the two different materials together. And then we're good. Now, because all these water lines are tied in to go into the shower, I don't have um, anything here for water hammer, okay? It's not needed. I've had plumbers tell me over the years, you don't need to worry about the water hammer arresters on PEX. It still happens a little bit. This plumber says you should still have them, but he says because they're built in with the laundry, this will still give you a lot of protection, so I don't expect to have any problems. Uh, other than that, we have the second vent line. I'm gonna just glue on a solid cap, okay? We're gonna treat it like it could have water one day, and we'll use glue. We aren't just gonna stick it on there or use a test cap. And then that should be it for us, okay? Uh, turns out the wire, the pump that we're getting is just a 15 amp regular plug-in, so we're just gonna wire this box for a plug. That's a full update. <laughs> It's a little interesting. Listen, you, you never stop learning as you go in this business because the rules are always changing. Plumbers don't get emails from the building code people when they change the building code. They have to constantly be researching. And a lot of research comes when the inspector shows up and says, by the way, you're doing that wrong. It's a crazy world we live in, right? So as I grow and I learn and the rules change, I'll continue to bring that information. But if you have different building code rules where you live, then put them in the comment section for us, okay guys? There's a lot of guys who watch this video, if you're plumbers, electricians, or HVAC guys, or even carpenters, and the rules are different where you are, let us know in the comment section. Help the community out, all right? Uh, so now we got our exhaust done, we've got a rough in water supply, drain vent system hooked up, and we've got our pipe tied in for the removal of all of the shower water and the laundry water that we're gonna pump through our Santa Flow. We need electrical. Uh, we need three sources of electric. 
I need a wire for the Santa Flow unit, and I need a plug for the washing machine, and I need a dryer outlet, okay? So, washing machine's gonna go over here. We're gonna just find a place where this box fits on the wall. And I'm using metal boxes that have teeth, okay? And so, that sets the depth on the front teeth for the same thickness as the drywall, all right? And the rear teeth, we just hammer in place. Once I have that set up, then I can add screws, top and bottom to hold it in place forever. Important to note, this is a welded box. That means that's a welded joint. There are a lot of boxes out there that have screws on the top and the sides open up and you can add, it's called gangable box, okay? They also come in plastic boxes, that's an option as well. Um, in this case, because it's welded, I don't have to add any wood over here. If it was gangable, I'd have to add wood here as well and add that to the drywall, screw it all together, okay? It's part of the code so that it, it doesn't disengage by accident, all right? Little tidbit, no big deal. And then this, this is our dryer box. This is not a regular square. This is a four and nine sixteenths, okay? It's dryer box size. And there is these knockouts, all right? So I'm gonna find a side that has two holes so that I can mount it. The dryer's over here somewhere. I'm gonna mount the dryer box here. That'll be good. And I wanna have it sticking out just a little bit on this particular wood is a little bit crooked, so I'm gonna set it back a little bit so it doesn't stick out too much. And I'll screw it in. My wire coming through from the top, because we're gonna follow, all of our wiring is gonna go up into the ceiling, across, and then over to the mechanical room. So let's open up our knockout first. There we go. Come on, honey. There we go. That's one side. That, a smaller hole is for three quarter. This is a one inch ring clamp. Let's try hammering this one loose. There we go. Now, you mount these boxes with the screws on the outside. Okay, and then you put the ring on. And it's important to note that this has to be installed fairly tight. This is the security of holding this wire in place. And in a lot of cases, we're dealing with serious voltage. So, take a screwdriver or your drill bit and you, you tighten it up like that in place. And you hit it a couple of times, try to get another quarter turn out of it. There we go. Now when it's on, it's on. It's not going anywhere ever again. Now we're ready to go. Now we can mount this bad boy. We're gonna go with two screws. We're gonna have a box all the way to here. I'm gonna set this up a little lower. In this case, the dryer will be here, right? And it comes up about this high. And then there'll be a, a mechanical box covering all of the other panels. Wanna have access to this without having it hidden in behind the box. So that's why I'm putting it lower. You don't need to access this without pulling the dryer out. So this will be fine. All right, now all we gotta do is run our wiring. Piece of cake. Okay, so before you run your wiring, you need two things. You gotta make sure you, you've tracked where you're gonna go. You gotta have the end from the beginning, right? So we're gonna be drilling through this plate, running our wire inside the wall. We're gonna then be drilling through this plate to run our wire up into the ceiling cavity, and then it will come down onto the surface and we'll travel across. It's gonna go up into a floor joist cavity and then go over to the mechanical room. Once we've got our path figured out, then we'll run the wire. So I'll drill holes and I'm going to bash some holes in the drywall and I'm gonna expose, I'm gonna rip off a good chunk of this drywall here and expose the uh, one by three because I have to have a nailing surface. Wire has to have a staple in it every five feet. So if I can't satisfy that, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pass my inspection. Very important that you have your path laid out. You've got at least a hole that the wire passes through or a staple every five feet. Once you've sorted out your path, then you can run your wire. Yeah, it's a little bigger than it needs to be, but it's all I could find, so. If you're concerned at all about the depth of your wire, you can always add a metal plate and they just hammer on. Uh, if you haven't seen that before, uh, we'll link in the video description. We moved the electrical um, receptacles for our kitchen. And in both of those cases, we had to add those boxes. So there's some more information on there if you need it as well. Here we go. And because I'm gonna be installing a box all the way along, it doesn't really matter how much of this I cut out. As long as I'm 
within the confines of what I think my box is going to look like. So. There's my nailing surface. So here's the unique situation. Um, we have rules about the staples in the holes. There's a third option, and that is you can fish because there's no need for a hole or a staple if you're not gonna be installing drywall over a location. The holes and staples are designed to keep the wire secured so you don't penetrate it with a screw. But if you fish, there's no screwing going on. So then that's another option. So I can effectively just fish it right up through this hole over to here, and then I can feed it to the other side of this beam from here, all right? And then we'll get, we'll do another fishing location and we'll just have a little patch to do instead of a whole box, I think. We will see. We don't know what we're gonna find until we go there. Okay, now remember for rough in, all we gotta do is have the wire in the room. So the other side of this door. So we're gonna punch a hole here. What we see here is, as long as I feed that on this side of the joist, I can go underneath the joist and into the room. That is awesome. Well, there's already a hole there. I'm just gonna cut out a little bit of the drywall in the ceiling inside the room. Okay, now I can get the wire in there. All right, now we got our highway. Time to run the wire. There it is. The rest is staples. Now that's a staple, right? Look at the size of that monster. <laughs> when you're in the store, the, um, the wires all have gauge sizes and staples are related to that. And they'll say on the package, S1 is for normal, S2 is for like a three wire, okay? Um, I think this is a four. This is for dryer. So I got a hole. I gotta have a staple here somewhere every five feet. And instead of using that surface, I'm gonna use the floor joist. And here's something very important. The staple, and this little pin on the side, okay? That's a depth setter. That tells you how much room you need to, from the surface wood for the space. You don't want the wire under too much compression, okay? That's perfect. Any more compression than that, you can run yourself into trouble. You can pinch the wire and you, people see it all the time there. Hammer these staples till the wire's compressed. That's a choke point and it gets overheated. When a wire gets old, that's the kind of place where it's gonna start to fire. Okay, one, two, three. Less than five feet, but I'm gonna throw another staple on anyway, just for good measure because it looks sloppy. When an inspector comes in and he sees that you're going above code, it usually is a good thing. Here we are. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is to get that wire into the furnace room. For full disclosure, 
This is an old piece of wire that I had laying around. I actually um, had this for the farmhouse, but I mismeasured. So now I'm using it here. <laughs> I've been dragging around with me forever because that bit of wire, I think was 280 bucks. I'm not much for throwing up money. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get it in here. Because it's in the room, it passes. And then I'm gonna put it in a box and then buy the wire that I need to get to the panel, okay? So this is for roughing. We're gonna put a bit of a curve on it. I'm gonna fish it up and over. There it is. Ah. All right. Mission accomplished. The dryer stove is now up to code. Ready to pass inspection. The only thing we gotta do is we have to get it into the box. Don't forget, the connection going into the box is not gonna be visible after drywall goes on. Again, that's what you're looking for. What's gonna be buried behind drywall versus what's visible now. As long as you satisfy what's gonna be buried, everything else will be visible later can wait till later. All right, so for final inspection, here's what they're gonna do. Uh, depending on how much trust they have in what you've done, they might do one of two things. A, they might turn the dryer on to see if the, the electrical connections are hooked up properly. What you can't do is just stick the wire in here and walk away. You have to be very careful here not to cut your hand, okay? You have to expose the sheathing. You wanna leave about an inch inside the box, okay? Because this compression has to be like that. I wanna get a staple just above the box, just because there's a lot of things going on here. I don't want him worried that this wire is gonna get interrupted with drywall. And then I'm gonna take this and I'll put compression on the wire so that it can't be yanked out. They sometimes they'll do a yank test. And then you can take this onto here. What you're looking at here is a situation where it might seem like there's enough wire here, but let me show you something. When you go to finish, you've got to have one of these and you'll see the three, the black, white, and the red all go from one side. Now these are long, so that's, that's good. But the, the ground comes off this side. So if this is a ground, are you able to strip and connect these three wires, okay? And then peel it back and then push it in. If the answer is yes, then you're fine. But if there's not enough ground wire here to go through this screw and connect and get into here and then do all your connections, then you're gonna have to tug a little more wire through, okay? Loosen this off, give yourself a little more wire. In my case, I'm gonna be fine. So that's cool. But the inspector is gonna be looking for this. Is my screw tightened on that ground wire? So when they come, they can have, visually they can see that. They see there's lots of wire here. I'm gonna have all this tucked in because I'm gonna be drywalling, okay? They give the tug test, they check for staples, they check every five feet. Yes, 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 staple, staple, good. All right, great wire. Now you're moving on, right? So let's go do the same process with the regular wire. It's just the same process exactly, only with smaller staples. I've got to create holes through the wall and the plate. This is the fire blocking, right? This used to be a commercial building, so fire blocking is part of code. Now that we're making it residential, it's not necessary. So I could knock it out, but I caused damage to the other side, right? Here we need a hole. Those self-fed systems work really great right up to the very end. <laughs> then you gotta push. All right. and same thing, we're gonna just run this wire the same path, use the staples, feed it through, get it into the other room. The difference is in this case, is we'll run enough wire to get right over to the panel and then all the way to the floor, plus an extra few feet, okay? And then all we're gonna do is take out a black marker and we're gonna label on there, washer. That way we know what we're hooking up. There we go. Sometimes when you're fishing between holes, it gets a little difficult to reach. So the world invented fish tapes and this works really great. You hold the end and you can just pull it out of the handle. And this travels over a lot easier. There it is. Let's get it over there. <laughs> gotcha. So it's a very short run, so I don't really need to go through the whole process. I could just tape it together. But for the sake of showing you something, let's do the entire process. We take off the sheathing. We cut back the black and the white. 
we create a hook in the copper. No! <laughs> ah! My kingdom for a bench that was tall enough for this room. Unfortunately, it is a bloody 10 foot ceiling. All right, so now we'll show you how to put it back in. Hold the inside and you just run the handle around and it pulls it all back. Be careful working with this stuff. It is a thin metal band. It likes to fly around. It's got its own mind. There it is. There. And you hook it through and we take our tape now and you just basically are trying to get rid of anything that can snag. That's all. You want to have a smooth run through the ceiling and we push and pull at the same time. Don't just pretend you're fishing, pulling a big tuna out of the, out of the water, okay? Push and pull. Here we go. There we go. Whew. Okay, let's fish this through here now. I've got enough to get to the ground. But as you can see, my panel is way over there. But I don't want to go across the middle of the ceiling. I'm going to go straight back. That looks like about six feet, another six feet over. Add a couple more. We're going to pull 14 more feet of wire. We'll do that right here. That's how much I need of the box. So I'm going to stretch it out. Four feet. 12 feet. 16 feet. That's my run. Here we go. And now I'll pull that the rest of the way through. We'll take enough here to finish that construction. That's fine. Okay, I just need to put a staple, come through the back. Okay. Stove wire is a stove wire. Perma guy's gonna know that. This is the washer line. That's for the final. Okay, now we're gonna take the tab, bend it back, flatten her out. We're gonna take the wire and location through the hole this here. I'm gonna cut the sheathing. And I'm gonna twist my hand about one degree just so that I'm running down the, the copper wire. Now there are other tools out there for stripping wire, but I grew up doing this, so I'm just I don't want to learn any new tricks. Here we go. Same thing. We put the wire through there. Okay, and then you bend it. So then when you push this wire back, it sticks out through the front. Okay, you bend it. Boom, all right? And then it's all sitting right here. You bring it through the same rule. Okay, have a little bit of sheathing showing on this side of the box. Tighten that up. Go like this. Get that ground wire screw connected. All right, there we go. Now we got lots of wire for our plug. We're gonna curl it all back in there so they don't damage the wires when we install our drywall. Now my Roto Zip can drive around the box. No problem at all. Now, we need a few staples. One you're going to want just on the outside of the box. Right here, let's say. All right. There's those tabs again. And for good measure, we're going to throw a staple up here. Now, the inspector is going to say, how are you closing that up? I'm going to tell him I'm, I'm going to build a little box here. Okay, and that way. I can use that strapping. As a, as a staple mount as well. There we go, that's done. Now there's one more thing I have to do. I have to run a 14 gauge wire, it's a two wire, over to where the Santa flow pump is gonna go. It's the same process, I'll just fish it through and I'll bring it down to the ground and I'm gonna leave it coiled up at the ground out here. And here's the reason why, is I don't know how the Santa flow is hooked up. So by going with a two wire, black and white, for the Santa cube, 
I'll go with the surface mounted box so it can be inspected after the fact. So he's gonna be cool with that. And I have the ability to put in a 15 amp breaker, regular switch, if that's all the power I need. It'll carry 20 amps if I need that, no problem. It'll also give me a 240 voltage system where the black and white can both carry power to the pump because I've installed a Santa Flow pump before that was big enough it needed that. So the, the biggest pump they have takes 240 power. That wire can handle all three of the spectrums. So we're just gonna run it and then I'll be like, I'm not sure what I'm using. I'm gonna use the surface mounted box and we'll get that hooked up later. And he'll be like, cool. Hopefully, fingers crossed. That's the question. Am I gonna pass the code inspection or not? I don't know. There's two different inspectors. I'm pretty sure what I've got set up here is gonna work. It's unorthodox, it's in a unique situation. Make sure you check out next week's video to see if I actually pass the inspection. <laughs> you know, some of you might be asking, why are you only getting occupancy, Jeff? Why aren't you gonna finish the whole renovation? It's a darn good question. But to be honest with you, I've already lost a year and a half owning this church because I was un unable to get trades to come in here and give me a hand with the major aspects of this build because of COVID. And two, I'm at a point now where I would rather just be able to move on and do something a little different than renovating a church. So you're gonna have to stay tuned to find out what that different is. <laughs> okay, you know, now more than ever, we've got to learn to be more independent. You want something done nowadays, you better learn how to do it yourself.